everyone, Chef Ryan here from Growing Chefs Ontario and today I'm going to teach you how to make an herby focaccia. This recipe is really good because it's basically foolproof and it's very customizable to whatever herbs you like or have at hand. Here's what you'll need. To make this recipe that yields two large loaves of focaccia, we will need three cups of warm water, one teaspoon of sugar, two tablespoons of active dry yeast, a quarter cup of olive oil, plus more for brushing on top and greasing the proofing bowl, seven cups of all-purpose flour, four teaspoons of salt, three to five cloves of roasted garlic, mashed. To make roasted garlic, just take a whole bulb of garlic, wrap it in tin foil, and place it in a 350 degree oven for about 20 minutes. Allow to cool and the cloves should squeeze easily out of the garlic paper. I have a half a cup of Asiago cheese grated. If you want, you can substitute Parmesan or an old cheddar here. A half a cup of freshly chopped herbs of your choice. Today I'm using rosemary and thyme. And lastly, flaky salt to finish. The equipment that you'll be using for this recipe are a stand mixer with the hook attachment, a large bowl for proofing, a set of measuring spoons, a set of measuring cups, a cheese grater, a cutting board, a chef knife, a pastry brush, a baking sheet lined with parchment paper or a silicone mat, and a rolling pin. To make your focaccia, you'll start by putting your three cups of warm water, sugar, and yeast right into the bowl of your stand mixer. You're going to let that bloom for about five minutes. You should notice some bubbling and frothing on the surface of the water. Next, you can add your flour, your olive oil, and your salt, and put that on to mix for about five minutes at medium speed. Once that has become fully incorporated, you can add your cheese, your herbs, and your garlic. Let that mix for another two minutes, and you should notice that your dough comes clean away from the sides of the mixing bowl. It's nice and smooth and elastic. You can put that right into your well-oiled bowl, and cover it with a clean tea towel or cling film and let it rest in a warm spot for about an hour. Now that our focaccia has rested for an hour, you can see that it doubled in size. You're going to knock it down to force all of that air out of it. And turn it out onto your table. You're going to divide the dough in half as equally as possible. And I like to shape my focaccia in an oval. So just sort of gently pulling it under and shaping it. And then either using your hands or a rolling pin, you can flatten it out to about an inch thick. put that on your baking sheet that has been lined with parchment paper or a silicone mat. Brush it liberally with olive oil and again let it sit in a warm place for one more hour. Now that your focaccia has rested for a second time it's almost ready for the oven. Preheat it to 350 degrees. You can see that our focaccia has risen quite a bit. Um, you'll want to take the tips of your fingers and just gently press them into the focaccia. This gives our characteristic dimples to the focaccia and creates those little nooks and crannies for the olive oil to soak into. Then we'll take some flaky salt and just sprinkle it all over the top to give it some crunch. And it's ready for the oven. It will go into the oven for about 20 to 25 minutes until it's very nicely golden brown on top. And here it is, our finished Herby Asiago Focaccia. It's been in the oven for about 25 minutes now. As you can see, it's nicely golden brown on the top. Make sure you let it cool for at least 10 minutes, preferably on a wire rack, before cutting into it and enjoying.